your biggest enemy, your biggest, the most important conversation you will ever have in your life is the one you have with yourself. You wake up with it, you walk around with it, you go to bed with it, eventually you're going to act on it, whether you're good or bad. You have to, that's why the whole thing about this book I have, it's about you. It is about you. It's strictly about you finding who you are. So many people die, live a hundred years, never can know who they are. Never know who they are. You have to look in that mirror and know this, there's so much more in here, man. Because I can literally right now be a 300 pound guy spraying for cockroaches still to this day. If I did not look in that mirror and say, there, there has to be more to this. This can't be it. And then willing to go into it, dive deep into it and give all I have to find it. So that's what, it's, that's what all that's about. Let's say there's 10 people in this room and we're all mediocre, but I'm the best of the mediocre people. I now think I'm great. I'm great. We surround ourselves around people that make us feel great. They tell us what we want to hear. The second we put ourselves amongst the uncommon people, we don't like that feeling, that challenge and feeling that of, of that person who's waking up at 3.30 in the morning and saying, hey, push your on, oh, we're going for a run. We don't like that challenge. We like that person who says, hey, you know what, man, I don't feel good today, man. And they say, oh, it's okay, brother. We'll take a day off, man, we'll get a pizza and watch the game. We like that. We, we love that feeling. Why? Because you understand, man, we're good, bro. We don't want that motherfuckers like this. Hey, man, no, bro. Get your fucking shit on, man. Stop being a punk. We don't want that in our lives. We don't want that person who's constantly challenging our weaknesses. We want that person who's constantly, you know, making us feel nice and good and secure in ours. That's the mediocrity of life. We want to be the best amongst the average people. People wonder, how do you stay hungry all the time? Because after I accomplish something, I don't sit back like a lot of guys who graduate buds, graduate this, graduate that. They get comfortable. They wonder why I'm getting weak, man. I don't know, I lost my edge. What's going on? Because once you hit the top of the fucking mountain, guess what happened? I'm good. I'm good, so you wonder why you're falling down now. Because once you're at the top of the mountain, you got to build a another one. That's mediocrity. There's a lot of people in mediocrity who have a nice resume, but they're one-timers, man. They hit, they hit a one-time deal, they busted it open, got a lot of money, but they're good. You're mediocre now, man. What are you doing today, tomorrow, the next day? That's why I'm listening to theorists. I don't listen to all that bullshit. I listen to a mother who's like this, man. What's wrong, man? I'm tired, dude. Why are you tired? Because tomorrow, I gotta do the fucking shit again, man. Whatever it is that made me fucking nauseous and sick to my stomach, it made me hurt. There's no ending. And that's the person I listen to. That's the person who's gained knowledge. You gain knowledge through suffering. And on the other end of suffering is a world that very few, very few have ever seen. It's a beautiful world because that's where you find yourself. You don't find yourself in over here. You find yourself on the other end. Like, like the 100 mile race I was on, I ran it for 24 hours. I found myself on the other end of that race. That 19 hours, I found, wow, there's a whole nother world out here that I've never even saw. But the world, my mind kept taking me in this direction. When things got uncomfortable for me, when I was facing my insecurities, when I was facing my fears, my mind said, oh no, we have the tactical advantage. We need to get you, separate you from this feeling. This feeling over here, life's all about feelings. We want the happy feeling. We don't want that feeling of this sucks. If in that moment, you can answer those up questions and you are now in charge of your brain versus your brain ruling you. That's where all that stuff comes from. So, so, so the 40% rule is all of that. You get to 40%, your brain says, we're done. Let's roll, man. This is starting to get painful. This is uncomfortable. So you sit down. You have to figure out ways and everybody's different. That's how the book kind of talks about, like we all have these things about, you know, five steps to this and, and four steps to this. It's, it's a lot more than that. That's all bullshit. It's, it's a practice that you have to, it's a habit. 
So if you know that at 40%, I'm still, you know, I'm feeling pain. At 40%, I'm feeling pain. That's where the 40% rule kicks in. Now it starts, okay, I'm, I'm feeling pain. My mind's saying all this to me. It's saying, get out of here, run, flee. The fight or flight kicks in. Okay, we're done, we're not good enough. It starts telling you all these things. You start to believe it because the mind controls all. This is the time where you have to gain control back of your mind. It's say, okay, let me see if I can go 45%. And once you start giving yourself more and more hope and start realizing, okay, the mind starts to be, okay, wh what are you doing? We're supposed to be going right and you're going left. You start then controlling your mind. Start finding more in, you know, in yourself. And then it goes from 40% to a lot further than that. But that's the start of it though. Get to the spot where your mind is saying stop. Wherever that is, you gotta get there first. And then that's when that starts to work for you. You gotta control yourself in that moment.